Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us and IndieWrestling.network for your independent wrestling entertainment. Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Just Pro Wrestling News Podcast. No filler, no pop-ups. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you, supporting us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show Vacation Edition. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in not Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, but a CD hotel room in Las Vegas. Actually, not CD. It's a Holiday Inn, and it just, and it just has poor lighting and these horrible drapes and stuff. But we're we're doing the show. At least I got a good microphone and a good good camera to make this at least hopefully half tangible uh but anyways please go uh, please everybody thank you for checking everything out uh we're just doing it's a little, little bit different but in the meantime please go check out everything at wrestling mayhem show.com hit me at that email address good times at wrestling mayhem show.com for one two two zero six wms zero and uh of course please follow our wrestling mayhem show facebook page group facebook group uh over on the youtube page we are live typically over on the twitch page for sorgatron media of course not live on the multiple formats this week uh a, we will be in a premiering mode if you're watching this right now or listening to this later and probably don't care whether it is uh but generally we are live every tuesday at 7 or 9 p.m eastern time sorry just at the other show uh so uh and also thank you to our uh partners over at uh uh Nope, that's that's a different show too. I forgot to thank them on the last one. But hey, shouts to Post Industrial for the heck of it. If you uh, want your Rust Belt news, news, go for it. Uh, anyways, I want to thank our Patreon supporters, including at our fan of the show level, Bo. Do it with me at home, diggity. Woo! As well as Ed Burke and Team Hammerfist at the Poppy Club level, Dave Potter and OccupyProWrestling.com at the Pizza Club level, Doc Remedy, Kyle Turner, and the Riz plays games on Twitch and Bobby FJ Town. And at the manager level, our friends Farnsworth Investments, Bradley Brothers. I saw you on the Twitch feed for Rise Wrestling tonight, Bradley. Um, and Tina Keys. You guys can support the show as well at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. So tonight I wanted to do something a little special and we have a a little bit of contribution, uh, from mayhemers as well. Uh, but, uh, I wanted to kind of just have a, a a kind of a a discussion or a kind of a thought. And and I'd love to hear you guys as, you know, if you're, if you're joining us here on the premiere, you know, quote unquote live on Tuesday night or afterwards, hit us up on the, on the social media, on the Facebook group or on uh, at mayhem show on Twitter. But I kind of wanted to talk about and ask you, like, why are you watching wrestling? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are we doing this? Uh, especially, I mean, every time I think about wrestling, and uh, and I think I was saying this, I think I said this at some point while we were doing live productions or, or um, for some of the local wrestling promotions, and just like, we're like, hey, everybody's fake fighting in their underwear. Why are we taking this so seriously? You know, um, but which it is. And it's, it's wild when you think about it. And when you think about the people that do take it, extraordinarily seriously uh you know whether it be people you know in the ring outside the ring around the ring whatever the case may be it's kind of wild when you think about it right like how has this idea of oily messy uh oily muscly dudes and ladies um you know rolling around in a ring and this is like a multi-million dollar industry which it is because that's wwe and i mean aw's getting up there too with like you know with their ratings and everything so like this is a big deal you know, and for me, when I talk about why do I watch wrestling, I mean, obviously, I think it's an evolution. Um, when I talk about how I first started getting to wrestling, that was your age of your Hulk Hogan's and Ultimate Warriors and uh, geez, uh, what else was happening at the time? Uh, Macho Man Randy Savage's, Tito Santana's, Coco Beware with the Bird. And it was just so colorful. And I remember the cartoon, of course, the Hulk Hulk. Hulk Hogan, uh, uh, rock and wrestling, you know, which just add that, that color to it. And then at, at some point I must've connected in my head, like the show on Sunday, superstars with that cartoon I was seeing on Saturday morning, um, which of course mixed the live action stuff. Right. 
And I got weird fever dreams about that from time to time. But anyways, is that on Peacock yet? I can't see if Rock and Wrestling's on Peacock. Anyways, no for no for later. But um, at some point, I I think it was a like it was. I mean, they say this when you're they're talking about Ultimate Warrior. I think in some of those documentaries, how he was just a larger than life character. He was a larger than life uh, superhero, right? Same with Hulk Hogan. Right. He was the he was the, the role model. Say your prayer. Like that's that's what I mean. I watched I was watching He-Man and Ninja Turtles at the time. Right. So it fit right along with what I was watching and what I was interested in um, as far as cartoons go, as childhood cartoons go. So I think it all it all meshed together and just became another uh, uh, another pillar of of what I was into at the time and the very, you know, you know, kid boy you know phase of my life and of course it just turns into um you know of course it was it it became a cool thing i guess you know phasing out of it for a little bit coming back like i faded out when everybody else did in wwf to be honest like when everything got weird and kitty and it just like didn't it didn't fit anymore it wasn't exciting anymore and i just just faded out and hadn't quite discovered uh, our Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart to stick with it. Uh, Lex Luger kind of drove me away. I just wasn't, I just faded off. I wasn't as interested in it um, at the time, you know, plus move the cable and everything. Um, and of course, over the years, it's just something that, you know, you know, it's something I always, I always watch with my father. Um, I remember having arguments with my uh, girlfriend at the time and saying, no, Mondays I hang out at home and watch wrestling with my dad. That's important, you know. <laughs> Sorry, can't hang out with you, you know. Um, and and it became even, you know more and more important over the years, uh, with uh, obviously doing this kind of stuff. But uh, and and of course that kind of evolves and 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 you know we talk about the last several weeks. I you know I've been you know this very evening I recorded this. I got to meet uh, Danny Limelight, somebody we see on AEW and uh, and New Japan Strong from time to time, and and you know just I love the weird and the wacky, and that's what reminds me of the old wrestling. But also I love the new of it. I love what uh, Dan Housen's like the wacky stuff you see Dan Housen doing, or what you know Chikara when that was a thing. You know, is the I I like I like to sample all the flavors of ice cream, I suppose, um, and just having fun, I like watching you know this Future Stars of Wrestling uh, show that we were watching tonight, and they just started like they're chanting milkshake for this guy, and I thought it was the most hilarious thing. A guy literally yelled out, "I'm so fucking happy to be here!" Just randomly at the beginning of a match. Like they were getting ready to lock out, and this guy just blurted this out, and it was just like, "Dude, dude, that's yes, I feel that so much, you know." Especially as we're all getting back to these shows uh, with lockdown. Even the show tonight, I think, was uh, it was like a two night anniversary for the last two years of anniversary shows they haven't been able to do. Uh, so I think it might have been their first kind of like show show uh, that they've they've done out here in Nevada. Uh, so, um, so I think everybody's kind of like. This, this latching onto that so but it's also uh, you know especially you know looking at indie wrestling and, and and stuff that we followed over the last few years you know there's there's following people following people in sports and having your favorite hockey player football player and watching them kind of grow and be successful i think that happens to a certain point in, with indie wrestling you know as a fan uh you sit there and you're watching these guys that are there and you can talk to them at the tables and then you know eventually you know, some of them are going to be on your TV from week to week. You know, seeing somebody like uh, Logan Shulo, Elias, uh, grow from like that guy with the bad brush paint tights and had a mic stand for some reason, grow into like what he's doing. Okay, maybe not at the moment, but he's done some pretty cool stuff with WWE over the last few years. You know, he's had WrestleMania moments with John Cena. I mean, come on, you know. Uh, and that's like the dude that, you know, I drank with in Philly one time, you know, so, I mean, extra character thing, but even just like, you know, you bought a t-shirt off, of, you know what I mean? Uh, like, like all those kinds of things, you know, seeing the Britt Bakers and Wardlow's come up and, and doing some great stuff now. And again, seeing them when they, you know, I, I filmed Britt Baker, uh, uh, coming, you know, saw her come out of the curtain for the very first time for her very first match and to see all the awesome stuff that she's doing now, you know, like, like 
you know, all that kind of stuff. Meeting uh, uh, Cesaro and Chris Hero at an old show and, you know, and then they're everywhere, right? Um, it's really interesting and really fun to see. So you, you see that kind of growth uh, with characters and you can follow and kind of cheerlead for them you know, as they kind of grow into that. So, I mean, I think that's the new side of it. You know, it's just that and the wacky. And, you know, as I said the last time I went, last couple times I went to the Gathering of Juggalos, sometimes you just want to see something really messed up. (laughs) And that's wrestling. And I'm not saying the deathmatch stuff, but just like something weird, something wacky, something, you know, something like familiar and different at the same time. And I think wrestling uh, delivers a lot of that. And there's just... um, and that community around is uh, really can be not always can be really cool. Um, how many times have you uh, moderately befriended the wrestling fan next to you at a show? Uh, we were chanting. I don't know what we were chanting at that show. That was uh, in the back of a fun zone uh, Atlantis place in Michigan a couple weeks ago. Uh, and, and we're just all just yelling at this guy and just like, you know, hey, no more no more rest holes. The rain is coming. Don't you see that cloud? You know, kind of stuff. You know, you can, you can have that instant camaraderie, which you can have in many things. But I think wrestling is uh, kind of interesting and special. So let's just take a moment and let's go see what mad mike has to say hey guys mad mike here um so basically sorg has been asking us to record for this week's special uh why we love wrestling um it's a complicated answer uh when i was a kid i loved it because it was crazy just outlandish stuff that i didn't see anywhere else um Wrestling brought me closer to my dad. We'd watch it all the time. He'd take me to shows. Um, Wrestling gave me a weird sense of community. And, um, And it just... It gave me a better appreciation for storytelling. Um, whether it's good storytelling or bad storytelling. And athleticism, uh, because those wrestlers are, we don't say this often enough, wrestlers are some of the best athletes in the world. Because not only are they doing live, improvised stage combat, essentially, they're mostly working with one take. Like, you can watch all the Marvel movies you want, but... Those stunt coordinators get many, many tries to do the same thing right. Um, And I don't think we give them enough credit for that. And I think it's something that we have to acknowledge every now and then. Apologies to Roman Reigns. Um, And honestly, wrestling can be just fun sometimes. Like, I, I, I sat down for the first time to watch SmackDown Live in a long time. And... It was fine. Did it light the world on fire? No, no, of course not. But you're not going to get every show that a, light, a show that lights the world on fire every single time. And the match with Roman and Rey Mysterio, which realistically I didn't think was going to happen. I thought it was just going to be some kind of gimmick for the pay per view. It was a real match, and boy. Roman fucked Ray up. It was very, very good. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun to watch. And on free TV, that's probably the best match I've seen on free TV in a red hot minute. And I've been trying to watch AEW, but uh, as you can see from my Twitter feed when I'm recording this, the TNT feed in my area has been down for the past hour. Uh, but, you know, I still want to try and consume as much as I can because I still do do like wrestling despite what we say on the show a lot of times and sometimes you have to wade through some stuff that you're not a fan of to find the nuggets and the gems that you really really dig and uh yeah i guess i guess that's about it so um have a good week mayhem arenos 
All right. Thanks a lot for the contribution, guys. And, uh, of course, uh, again, if you have any thoughts, you want to tell us why you watch wrestling, please hit us up at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group, however you at Mayhem Show Us, at Wrestling Mayhem Show Us, Instagram, whatever you like to do. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.